Hi, my name is Chinmay Kulkarni. I'm a visiting researcher at Google's People Plus AI Research Lab, and I'm an associate professor at Emory University. In this talk, I want to chat with you about large language models, which are a recent and exciting development in the field of human-centered artificial intelligence. Today, I'll speak a little bit about how large language models work at a basic level, how and why human-centered design and human computer interaction matters uh, for large language models. And we'll use the case study of instruction tuning or designing models for uh, following human instructions. Then we'll look at a few implications of this development, such as how it enables new kinds of programmers who can perform new tasks with artificial intelligence and can these tasks can be measured with new measures of success. To begin, large language models are sophisticated artificial intelligence systems, but they are trained on a very simple task. They are trained simply to predict what comes next in text. For example, given a text like the capital of France is, you might predict or guess that the next word is Paris. And this is precisely what a large language model does. Uh, throughout this talk, I will use this green text with a highlight to suggest that that is the output from a large language model. Now, this seems like a very simple model, but you can express many useful artificial intelligence pr uh, problems, such as question answering, recommendation, translating from one language to another, brainstorming for ideas, conducting conversations, and more, as predicting what comes next. So the trick behind using large language models to, uh, to solve AI tasks uh, is to express the problem as predicting what comes next. This translation of an AI problem into uh, predicting the, uh, the text that comes next is called prompt programming. And I'll give you a couple examples of this. Now, let's say you want to build a system for recommendations, and you want to give people recommendations for what they should do while they're in Hamburg. So you could, to get recommendations, design a prompt, as I have here, which says, here's a list of two or three things to do in Hamburg. It has a colon, and it starts a bulleted list with the first asterisk. You can send it off to a large language model. In this case, I'm showing you output from Palm, which is a language model developed by Google. The language model can respond in this case with a few suggestions like go uh, to uh, this part of Hamburg in the old harbor, or go to uh, the Wonderland, which is a huge model railway, and so on and so forth. And just like that, with very little effort, you have the start of a recommendation system uh, for a tourist. So, you can see how expressing question answering or translation or brainstorming can follow a similar route. We've now looked at the basics of large language models. I'm going to now talk about how and why HCI matters. And here I want to talk to you about this idea of designing large language models to follow instructions. So, Let's start with the obvious idea that, uh, given the previous section, you could use large language models as simple autocomplete machines. You start a piece of text, and the uh, language model responds with the completion. But querying such a language model is a little bit like playing Jeopardy. You must guess how the answer looks, and then you must shape your prompt the part that you pass into the model to look like it. So that is not a great user interaction. So what instead, what, what if you could just give it instructions? What if you could just say, well, suggest a recipe with three things I'm likely to have in the fridge, instead of saying, well, here is a recipe that uses only three ingredients, all of which are likely in your refrigerator, put a colon, and then hope the model will respond to the recipe. Asking the model exactly what you want it to do, or rather giving it an instruction, is 
a much easier interaction than asking a language model to follow uh, uh, to, to complete a piece of text. Now, this idea of creating language models which follow instructions is for instruction tuning. And it is really a process of uh, training or fine tuning a model, not to predict the next uh, piece of text, an unstructured text, but really to predict a sequence of an instruction followed by a response. The instruction here would be suggest a recipe with three things I'm likely to have in the fridge. And then the response would be a recipe that follows those instructions. So you could train or fine tune a language model uh, to do this. And such language models are called instruction tuned language models. Now, no note here what we have done. Uh, this is a machine learning solution to what is inherently an HCI problem. Instruction tuning makes the interface to large language models much more usable. Put differently, what we have seen is large language models are sophisticated AI models, but to make them useful, you need not just an AI advance, but also an HCI advance. You'll see how the centrality of HCI is playing out in a few more areas next. The first way that it is playing out is that large language models are empowering a new kind of programmer. Especially with instruction tuning, LLMs can be used now instead of a programmer who is familiar with AI techniques and has passing knowledge of a domain. Now we can empower developers who are intimately familiar with the domain and have a rather general understanding of how do you write LLM instructions. And then you can have developers uh, solve really interesting uh, tasks which require specialized knowledge of their domain. So for instance, here are a few prompts that you could write with a modern large language model. You could say, explain the SQL query in plain English. And here's the domain specific part. Assume that the reader is familiar with gap accounting, which is the generally accepted accounting practices. So this is something that a programmer working in the finance domain might know, but it's likely that an AI programmer might not. Something closer to Kai, perhaps, is write a social media ad aimed at attracting PhDs to apply to your company and make it sound meaningful, but do not be academic. Again, if you know any graduating students, you might you might understand that PhDs often want to work on meaningful problems. Similarly, you can have a customer question bot where it says respond to customer questions in a polite way. If you can't answer, ask them to email a specific email address. In all of these examples, you can see that programming these uh, AI mo uh, models has become much more usable with instruction tuned models. And now you can bring in large amounts of domain knowledge to make AI more useful. This also is creating new opportunities for programming support. Uh, while I said these large language models follow human-like instructions, there you could also think of them as programming in a language without a well-defined programming grammar or a language grammar. Um, and this creates its own set of opportunities. Um, we have a poster here at Kai, Programming Without a uh, Programming Language, which lays out a few of these uh, opportunities and challenges. Now, we talked about empowering new kinds of programmers. Large language models also allow you to solve new kinds of AI tasks. Often in the past, when you wanted to solve an interesting problem, you had to somehow find ways to freeze it into a long-standing or classic AI task, whether it was summarization or question answering or translation or so forth. But now you don't have to do that. You just have to suggest useful instructions. So this freedom empowers developers to articulate and solve completely new tasks. Here's one example I was playing with yesterday. Uh, suggest a hex code color that captures the spirit of a new beginning with excitement and some trepidation. And again, this is output from a Google Palm model. Uh, the colors on the left, this bluish tinge that we have here. And here is the model's explanation. 
The scholars often associated with hope, new beginnings, and peace, often used in marketing to represent new products and services, which seems like a pretty good idea. I don't know actually if you would end up using this color, but it certainly sets you in an interesting direction. Stepping back for a second, suggesting a hex code that captures the spirit of a mood is not a classic AI task. And yet, using a language model gives you a starting point to start addressing this problem. Okay. We talked about uh, some new task definitions, but to, to, to drive home the point, large language models allow new kinds of tasks and expertise in human computer interaction can help us decide which of these tasks we should solve. We are no longer limited to solving a small set of tasks, which have been classic tasks that everybody knows. But now we can say, OK, well, let's see what tasks specifically we want to solve. It isn't just summarization, but summarization for what goal? Or recommendations, but what assumptions? We, I show you recommendations assuming a tourist, for instance, or more in a different field, you could ask these language models to generate a poem, but then as an HCI expert, you might investigate how is such a poem imbued with meaning? What are the human experiences around that AI task which could imbue such a poem with any meaning? Here are a few, a few papers that have started to look at some of these ideas. Okay, the last thing that I want to mention in this space is we now have these language models that allow us to do a broad variety of tasks, but we also need new ways to measure what it means for these tasks to be correct. And this is a question that is inherently human. It implicates human interaction. To go back to that recipe example, if I ask for a recipe with three ingredients, does salt count as an ingredient? Whether or not it does is not a question that is about technical correctness, but about human experience. Similarly, with the color example, what is the right code for representing happiness? Perhaps it varies from culture to culture. Defining culturally specific, task specific, and interaction specific evaluation metrics remains an HCI question and one that I believe is likely to lead to lots and lots of interesting new machine learning advances. With that, uh, thank you for giving me your time. And, and I'm hoping to see you all in person in Hamburg.